Um, so we're going to do a workshop completely on balance and a lot of things you may already see during the classes or you may already be practicing but the emphasis is going to be placed on uh, dealing in life with being balanced so in life you have basically two things that really are really important as far as balance is concerned and that's our ability to deal with gravity and, and you know not fall so to, to stand up uh, balanced means to not uh, succumb to gravity and the other is inertia or turning so sometimes we can get off balance just walking and sometimes we get off balance turning so what we're going to do is we're going to work on both of those things today so that they're uh, uh, much easier to deal with in daily life and, and everybody needs balance I work at balance every day because a little bit more really goes a long way as far as just everyday life you know everything that we do Every day is full of challenges, new things here, new things there. So the more balance we have, the better. Okay. Um, before we start uh, doing some exercises, now I understand that you may not have great balance coming in here. And if that's true, you feel free. You can do a lot of these things sitting down. You don't have to do them standing up right away. A lot of people I teach <clears throat> who don't have good balance will just sit down. And they'll do the exercises, and they'll get the same feeling, the same benefits, you know, doing, putting the weight, doing all of this. And then eventually they'll be able to stand up, and they'll just be able to do the same thing standing up. So it's, it's progressive. And uh, being patient with yourself and, and giving yourself some time is very important, because although you'll get some tricks tonight, you will get some tricks, help you with balance like that, the, the long term is really what we want. We want the long term to continuously build better, better, better balance. Okay. The first thing with balance that we're going to talk about is you have an object. Okay. To understand how to balance an object is actually very simple. You need to find the middle of the object, and then you can balance it like a pen. So what I need to do is I need to find the middle of the object and I can balance it. Sometimes things are tricky because there's more weight on one side or what have you, but everything's going to have a balance point, everything. Uh, if I grab a sword, okay, you'll see that because there's a handle and then this is very thin, it's definitely more weighted there. So we really got to find the different kind of balance point. It's not in the middle. But everything still has a balance point. When you become balanced, things become very light, very easy to move around, um, you know, with no, no extraneous effort or injury or anything like that. So we're going to look for this middle point uh, in ourselves. Okay. Um, but we're going to do quite a few exercises we don't do in daily classes. And if you do them every day, they're going to help. They just they helped me. I'm my own poster child for most of this. I didn't always have balance. I wasn't always uh, uh, bouncy and, and healthy and everything like that. I was, you know, typical stiff New York type. Um, so over time, the Tai Chi has taught me to be more centered, more balanced. Means the same thing. When we say I'm looking to be centered, I'm meditating to be centered. You're meditating. You're looking to be balanced. Okay, centered, balanced, same thing. Okay, so first point we're going to look at is the crown point. That's the middle of the head. That's actually the same exact point where you see this chain swinging. When we understand this point, we, we get to the first aspect of balance, and that's keeping the head level. Okay, keeping the head level keeps the fluids inside of the head and all the equilibrium and the tissues that are pulling up the back or pulling down the chest keeps them all balanced and it actually gives your body the ability to feel light and suspended and to have more balance. And typically uh, with some people what they'll do is they'll fall. They'll fall once and then the rest of the time they have to look at the floor. They're looking at the floor when they walk. Uh, offsetting and changing their head so those fluids and those tissues are actually being uh, uh, imbalanced. Yeah, so then it's very hard to walk. It's not easy to walk when your head is looking at the floor, but I do understand why somebody would do that, because you're afraid to fall again, of course. Okay, but this is the first point, and we're going to call this the crown point. And this is one of the most important points 
uh, that we work in Tai Chi. In Chinese, it's called Bai Hui. Bai Hui means um, 100 meetings. It's like all your uh, meridians and such uh, converge at that point. Okay, a lot of things. Relieves headaches, relieves a lot of stress in the head, um, excess pressure, things like that. To find this point, it's easy. It's right at the tips of the ears, right at the top. So you just find the tips of your ears and you go right to the top. And we call this the crown point uh, because what you'll hear me say is raise your crown. You want to raise the crown. Okay? To raise the crown. Stand up tall, confident, you raise the crown. You stand up arrogant, the crown goes back and all of the bones and tissues pull to the pull up. Okay? And we know we don't want that. Um, if the crown point goes forward and we become like uh, collapsed, so we don't have balance either. So remember, balance is the middle of the two. Not this excess, not this excess, but right in the middle. That's where the balance is. Okay? It's just being comfortable. When you find comfort in your body, you will find all these things. Uh, so one thing you can do is you can use your finger and you can just massage that point. Um, it's better to use your palm, but it can mess up your hair, so maybe do it before you go to sleep or you know, before you get in the shower or something. And basically, you just put your hands on there and just circle it maybe uh, 18 times one way, 18 times the other way. All right? And what's going to start to happen is you're going to develop a feeling so that when, I, when, when even you tell yourself, raise your crown, raise your spirit, get your crown up, you know what it feels like rather than just kind of guessing. Is it here? Is it here? You will actually, through the massage, you'll be able to really recognize and feel what it's like to stand up tall and confident. Okay, that's the first point. Uh, the second point that we'll talk about is going to be your perineum. Your perineum is where your legs meet. And it is, uh, in Chinese, called hui yin, means meaning of the yin. Okay. And it's, uh, mostly it's just ignored throughout most cultures, that area of your body. We don't want to ignore it anymore because that's also the center. See, right where my legs meet, that perineum, that's the center of my body. And when I can line that up with the center of my head, I create what we call center equilibrium. Okay, and I'm going to just uh, put CE for Century Equilibrium. And for today's class, we're going to call that the line of gravity, just to make things easy to understand. Line of gravity. So dealing with gravity, understanding how gravity works. It's a constant pull. That's what gravity does. I have to find the middle of myself so that gravity can just pass, pass right through me, rather than pushing on me. It's just like laying a stud in the wall. You want to lay the center to the center from top to bottom. That way any pressure or weight from the roof immediately transfers to the floor. Any weight or pressure in the head, immediately we want it to transfer to the floor. Just like the studs in the, in the walls, your bones are the same, same structure in your body. They the, serve the same purpose. So by kind of labeling these points and finding out where they meet up, you know, we're, we're not standing like this and wondering why we, we have no balance, you know, we're standing like this. We can start to feel, you start to feel that crown leveling up. You start to feel that perineum right underneath it. See? And then you start to walk and you start to actually carry that balance. So getting inside of the, uh, of the body into the center, um, that's going to continue right down through the legs, through the feet, into the floor, and that's called the line of gravity. Okay, any questions on this so far? It's pretty basic stuff, and a lot of you know this, know this already. Um, this is a Western medical chart, and it shows the same line. It shows the same line going through the same thing. And it's interesting that they use the skeletal system, because as I said, the bones are kind of like the studs in the, in the beams in the wall. They're what stops the roof from collapsing. It's transfer the force or the weight right into the floor. In other words, the house knows how to contend with gravity, just like we want our bodies to.
okay? So understanding that gravity passes through, not only through this line, but through the bones. Um, so that's a, the, one of the next things that we are going to uh, locate. Now this line actually passes through the front of your spine. Um, don't worry too much about that right now, we'll get to that later. Okay. Uh, perineum, you can, you can massage. Um, you know, it depends on honestly how, how comfortable you are with yourself. But if you do massage it, the area will start to open. It's good for like everything down there, your prostate, your colon, your bladder. We ignore it, we ignore it, we ignore it. Wonder why everything down here starts to go wacky, stops working so well. Because all it does is it just squeezes and holds and compresses and there's no more circulation. So massaging that point, uh, if you are comfortable with yourself, would really give you a boost to your health aside from just the, just the balance. Okay, it's going to give you more balance. Because knowing that where that balance beam is and not letting it sag to one side or sag to the other, but just keep looking for that balance. Okay, next point we're going to go is the center of the hip. Okay, so this is a good one to a massage as well. You can do this stuff when you're watching TV. You don't have to make it a routine like, a, you know, a hard discipline. Just watching TV. So I'm sitting, I'm looking for the fold where my leg attaches to my body, the inguinal fold or the qua. And I'm just going to go right in the middle of it. Okay, and then I'm just going to massage that right in the middle of my groin or my, my fold there, my qua. If I'm standing, there's the fold right in the center. And again, you can go 18 one way, go 18 the other way. And what this is, this is the center of your, center of your uh, inguinal fold, which is where your hip joint is. See, so now we're trying to get the weight or the pressure of gravity from the torso down through the legs, and it has to pass through this little jump. So you can see like this, the pelvic bone to the, uh, to the leg bone, to the femur. The weight has to go through the tendon ligament fluids from one bone to the next. So if the weight is pushed to the outside, it's impossible, it is physically impossible for that weight to drop into the floor. So you can deal with gravity. You're going to feel like you're always falling there. But we transfer the weight into this point. Okay, I'm just going to keep working my body as many days or weeks as it takes. I'm going to figure it out and I'm going to feel that that's where I want my weight, right in the center of the hip joint. So your hip joint is, again, located in the center of this fold and just daily massaging not only loosens these bones, because for a lot of us, those bones are stuck in there and the clicking, popping, grinding. Um, to kind of get away from that, we're just going to massage them. 18 times, one way, 18. And you can do it several times a day. Another thing this is good for, like everything else, your immune system, largest cluster of lymph nodes right in the center of this fold and they need that manual work. If, if we're not turning and moving and uh, getting exercise in here, then massaging will also help to flush that lymph. Okay, we're gonna go to the next point. So let me put that, it's kind of hard to see on the side here, but we're gonna say center of fold. Okay, for today, we don't need to know all the fancy terms. You don't need to know them to, to live life and, and just be happy and balanced. So we're going to omit a lot of the, the fancy terms and the jargon and just get right to the point, okay? All right, now, not only on this picture, but you'll also see on this chart that the next point is a little funny. It's actually the back of the knee. So when the weight goes through the bone, the, weight that it, the way that it moves is the pressure of the weight or gravity of the body is going to go through the back of the knee, okay? When you're standing and your knees are unlocked, the way that the bones are shaped is it can't come to the front and then transfer down. It goes through the femur into the uh, shin calf bone and then down to the foot through the back of the knee. Okay, so that would be the next place that we would massage. Some of these things seem very subtle, maybe even insignificant, but they do have huge, uh, huge benefits to them. So again, you're just rubbing the back of your knee. Now, immune system again, first largest cluster of lymph nodes, second largest, and the third largest is behind your knee. So getting movement, getting motion, just like a little gentle rub, you don't want to go deep at all, just like skin, skin deep, skin surface, 
and then go the other way. And what will start to happen is your mind will start to connect to the body through feeling. And then when you're standing, rather than the weight coming to the kneecap or the weight coming to the outside or to the inside, that daily massage you'll start to feel, well the weight's supposed to be in the back of my knee so that it can go down to the foot. Okay. So again, massage does help. Um, mo we don't really teach the massage in our daily classes. Again, due mostly to time constraints, but also uh, you can get a lot of the other, the, a lot of this stuff done just by doing the Tai Chi forms and stuff. But this is definitely extra, and I do a lot of this myself. Okay. And then the one of the final points that we'll talk about right now is the uh, center of the foot, center of the arch. And uh, we'll talk about that in a second there. Center of foot, center of arch. Okay, anybody have questions on this? This is tracking your body from head to toe on where all the balance points are. Okay, you, you can't decide in your head how you're going to balance the stick. You can't say, well, I'm going to balance it like this. It doesn't do it. It just doesn't do it. You have to follow the, the laws of the universe, laws of nature, and you find the middle of the thing, you know, and then you can start to, to finally balance it. Okay? It's the same in the body. I can't just have my body any which way and expect gravity to not be pushing on it. That's what gravity does. It pushes and pulls. But if I can stand up tall, then gravity will pass through my crown right to my feet the same way it does the stick, passing through these bones. Making the body uh, not only more balanced, but weightless. You don't, uh, the weight of the body, you oh, I feel so heavy. That's tension. That's stress and tension and gravity not leaving your body. When we start to straighten up, and, and it takes a minute, it does take a little bit. You find that wiggle into that right spot, and then gravity goes poof, right through you. You feel light, feel comfortable, feel balanced, feel stable. Uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. It's a very, very beautiful thing to experience. Okay. Now before we get to the feet, we're going to, um, again, you can practice these uh, massaging them. Uh, we're going to move on now to two important aspects of gravity. And that's your physical center of gravity okay, and your base. So your center of gravity and your base. Now we're just going to pay attention to blue right now. Center of gravity. Think about what that's saying. It means you can find the center of gravity in your physical body so that you can balance like the pen. You can balance like the stick or the sword or whatever, like a scale. You stay very balanced and stable. And the base, or what some people refer to as a center of balance underneath the foot. So these two things are what you're going to want to focus on the most when you're looking for balance and stability. Everything else I said is just extra. So we're just going to focus on this line and this and this. Okay. Um, let's start with the feet though. We're going to start with the feet. Talk about the feet, how to put the weight on the feet. Okay, so that's my rendition of a right foot. Now when we're looking for the balance, we actually want to go like we're cutting the foot right in half, just like that. Okay, so on your foot, you want to get a sense of right down the middle, like you're wearing ice skates. How would I balance on ice skates? There's a reason we put the ice skates right in the middle, because that's where your balance is. There's a reason that when we're wearing stilts, you know, when we're in a carnival or we're doing drywall, there's a reason that they're placed where they are so that gravity can continue to go down through them. So when we get to the foot, we don't want gravity stuck in the foot. We want to continue, let it continue down into the floor, giving us balance. So we really need to understand the, uh, uh, the foot here. Let me show you something too. So we have the toes, we have the ball of the foot, we have the heel, we have the blade, and we have the arch. 
Uh, what a lot of people don't realize is that you don't actually just have one ball of the foot, but you have two, and your foot bends or folds in half. See, that's the center, and everything relaxes off of the center. Okay, so when we put the weight down the middle, it allows the foot to just fold or relax. It's not solid piece, it's, it's, very, it's bendable in half. It's bendable in half. It's hard to show you at this angle, um, but uh, you again, try it on your own foot. Actually, that's probably a little better of an angle. Yeah, see how it folds? And then my foot can fold or relax down to the ice gate, or that's where my balance is. That's where my balance is. It, and uh, it can't be on the outside. Uh, for all intents and purposes, when you become much more advanced, it can come more to the inside, and you do want it to come to the inside. But initially, right down the middle, okay? Now secondarily, we're gonna cut the arch in half. Okay, so if I can see on my foot and understand there's a line going down the middle, now I want a line going down the middle of the arch. And where they intersect in the center of the arch, that's my center of balance. That's where my balance is, right in the middle of the arch. In short, you're taking your center of gravity and you're finding somewhere for it to go. Rather than holding your center of gravity and keeping it up here, like the studs in the wall, we're letting all the weight drop so that we don't, we're not uh, fighting gravity. Okay. You can also rub the bottom of your feet on that point too. Uh, that's another good one. It's going to help to release the tissues in every direction. So it's not just targeting that one little point, but uh, where the tissues, where the muscles all meet. All right. Okay. Um, let's see. All right. So we talked about the center of the center of the foot, center of the arch, center of balance. Let's talk about the center of gravity a little bit, and then we'll get to some exercises.